Secrets of the London Yiddish Stage was a rehearsed reading of three short plays in translation, an excerpt from a Yiddish play with subtitles, and a Shakespeare soliloquy in Yiddish, performed by a group of international actors brought together for this event. The plays were interspersed with songs from the Cockney Yiddish Music Hall by the band Kachanus. It was part of the Queen Mary University project Making and Remaking the Jewish East End. I've been collecting all sorts of material from the Yiddish press and my particular focus is on what popular culture, so that's poems or stories or plays or short stories, bits of fiction, what they tell us about um, the history of the Jewish East End. And, you know, we know quite a lot about the history of the Jewish East End, but in terms of popular culture, it gives us a slightly different angle on it. It gives us an angle on what people found funny, what people were engaging with, the way it fitted into the sort of debates that were going on in the East End. They're all plays that are written in Yiddish by Jews who were living in the East End of London, I think in the early 20th century. So they're quite different in the periods that they're looking at. I definitely think that they feel resonant today. The scene that's about the election feels very resonant with the political situation currently in terms of the kind of corruption of government politicians and the cynicism of the characters who are talking about them. So, there's an election in January 1910. What great material for a Yiddish play. Our people are very disappointed with the Liberals. They promised us so much at the last election, but what did they do? Look, I'm not a passionate Liberal, but I do have to say, in their defence, what could they have done with such a strong Conservative opposition? And then, after all the effort they made and managed to pass the People's Budget Bill through the Commons, the House of Lords threw it out anyway. My grandfather was a Yiddish writer. My grandmother was a Yiddish actress. Uh, so Yiddish was around when I was a child. I didn't grow up speaking it. I actually learnt it at Oxford when I was a student, so I speak an Oxford Yiddish, or as I used to say uh, until very recently, the Queen's Yiddish. Um, so it's, it's like a standard Yiddish. But, uh, and then I went on to become an actor and did some amateur Yiddish acting and directing and writing myself. So it's always been a passion which has lapsed a little bit, so it's great to pick it up again for this project. The thing that's really passionate for me is uh, those two bits that I'm doing that are in Yiddish uh, and that also connect with my family heritage. So I'll be doing a monologue from The Merchant of Venice in the translation that my grandfather did that was performed here in London. And I'm also doing a little bit from The King of Lampedusa that my grandmother acted in here in London. It's interesting to hear. I hope that you can see from the Ruch in the Talmud Teure Melamed. Er lässt mich grüßen und bett bei mir einen guten Posten. Er demont mich, also er hat mich euch gelernt, ich habe teure zu meinem Tag Mitzweh. Und also wie er hat das Schöne lang gebracht, will er werden Bildungsminister in meinem Meluch. Reporters für die Zeitungen, hm? die Agenten von der Versicherungskampagne, wo es kennen die Reinrechner gehen, den Beuch. Oh, in Zigazi, die Stadt vorne. In the Dementen Händler, ja, ja, in andere Schlecken für uns. In the Yiddish theatre, they had a lot of Yiddish songs that were um, incorporated into the action, and often they had nothing to do with the action, but they were just incorporated in, and it became a little bit like you'd have turns, you'd have different things happening to keep everybody interested and engaged in what was going on. <laughs> tiny role in Ungrabbed, one of the Chappers, the guys who were coming to steal recruits for the Tsar's army. Ungrabbed was a verse play by Maurice Vinchevsky, who was called the Zayda, the grandfather of Jewish socialism. He lived in London for 15 years, active in the 1880s, and writing about London. But this play is about the feared Chappers in Russia, the people who grabbed Jews to be in the Tsar's army. I vow to be better 
with a horse and cart? And what if we were really quick and asked the miller Stefan? Oh, you're going to make me sick with your ideas. There's no time to run. The thing that's really exciting me about this project right now is the rhythms in the texts of her translations. They feel so of the time, but also are so recognisable now with, uh, with like how people interact today. And just the stories in some of these plays are so captivating and interesting. Uh, yeah, it's a real pleasure to be working on it. He's small fry compared to a man as important as you. Such a clever clock who gives me no respect and just demands food from your mother. Dad, I know the law better than your landlord. England is a free country. Here people aren't thrown out. It's true he has money, but we have character and humanity. <laughs> the Yiddish theatre was very, very popular in the East End. You got to hear Yiddish, and what was particularly important and interesting is you got to hear Yiddish about your own life, about London, about um, life in the East End, and it was reflected to you, so it was very funny. You got a sense of, like, um, you could be laughing at yourself and you could be crying the tears of exasperation and all the feelings that, that you had to go through in your normal life, dealing with poverty and dealing with sort of like anglicisation, becoming more English, becoming less religious, working out how all this fitted together. An immigrant generation coming to this country and then their children and the sort of tensions that existed between them. And all of this came up in the Yiddish theatre. The kind of Jewish family that we see depicted in Bankrupt feels really <laughs> resonant for me. It reminds me a lot of the family that I grew up in and families I know. Um, some things never change. She's clever. She's kind. She's not too ugly. <laughs> but no one looks at her. It makes me so upset. Tell me, Hannah, uh, how, 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 how old is our Esther again? What a question from a father. You're just another one of my problems. You don't even know how old your daughter is. Have you any idea what it means to be an unmarried woman at the age of 30? You think I don't know? Yeah, you think I don't know? I know 13 is oh. 18. Mm. You think I worry about her less than you do? Well, you're wrong. I don't get a wink of sleep all night worrying. Bankrupt was written by Katie Brown. Katie Brown was dubbed Whitechapel's Yiddish bestseller. She was a prolific writer from the early 20s to the mid-50s, publishing comic sketches in the Yiddish press and collecting them in books. She also wrote plays and songs for the Yiddish theatre. Bankrupt is a soap opera set in London's East End. It's, it's probably not your fault. It's your, it's your character and you can't change that. He also explicitly said that he, would, he can't and he won't live with you. He has to. I'll make it. You're so naive, Lily. There is no law that can force a man to live with his wife if he doesn't want to. I've been offered a really good match for you, but I know that you won't like it. Yeah, you said it yourself. I won't like it. <coughs> <laughs> Tell me about the man. <laughs> Believe me, he's a man like lots of other men. He's nice looking, he's rich, he's respectable, only... Only what? His terrible fault. God protect me, I wouldn't want someone like this either. <laughs> well, listen, Esther. He's a widower with six children. <laughs> but he is a <laughs> shy shy I've only just met the other members of the cast. Um, Shane is a very uh, exciting, interesting performer. as a, a fluent Yiddish speaker, but someone who learnt Yiddish like myself. He doesn't have the same background as me, but um, that's very exciting. And it's just really great to see young people. Uh, interested in Yiddish, performing uh, Yiddish theatre, maybe not so much in Yiddish, but people are speaking Yiddish in the rehearsal room, which is really exciting for me. You don't hear it uh, that often. Um, so, yeah, it's really, it's quite a thrill. <laughs> OK, it was a rhetorical question, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right. This is the madness you've unleashed. <laughs> Seeing this material that I have translated end up on a stage and the actors bringing life to it that I couldn't bring life to it as a writer, it has been joyful. In Victoria.